Hi folks, David Farmer here, and today I'm going to show you a way of batch converting multi-channel files, say 5.1s or 7.1s, to stereo, or you, uh, you could even use this to go to mono. This is going to preserve the dynamic range, full dynamic range, and not clip. So this is uh, really fantastic. It's a sort of a new tool for us uh, Pro Tools users. So here's what we're going to use. We're going to use Spanner, a new plugin, a uh, relatively new plugin from Maggot. Uh, we're going to use Pro Tools 10, it has to be 10 or later, because Spanner is AAX, and also we need a 32-bit Pro Tools session. This is very important, the 32-bit part. And this is going to be Audio Suite. So I do recommend that you work on copies of your audio files, so in case you have the settings set to overwrite original, you don't screw up your original files. Okay, I've got my Pro Tools session here, and this is my template session, which I use to do my fold-downs. Let me show you. It's, it's basically an empty session that I always clear out every time because you're going to generate, since this is audio suite, you're going to generate a whole bunch of media that is just sort of interim that you'll export at the end to be the files you're going to archive. So basically what I'm going to do today is take some 5.1 of my Stone Giants sequence from The Hobbit and I'm going to fold them down to stereo to then archive as a sound effect library. But let me just uh, go over this session really quickly with you. So I've got my stereo track up here, which is what I'm going to eventually use to fold down. Down here, I've got the uh, 5.1 track, which is where I'm going to actually process the files, use Audio Suite to process and fold down the files. And there's a, here's an, an inactive 7.1 track, which I would be using if, uh, if my multi-channel files were 7.1. And then down below, I've got a whole bunch of mono tracks, which I'll explain why, why they're there in a few moments. Okay, so now let's switch to the Finder. So I'll show you my session setup. Okay, here we are in the Finder. Um, you'll see the normal Pro Tools, uh, audio files, video files, session file backups, clip groups. These are all generated by Pro Tools. I have a folder here called To Fold Down. So basically I've made a copy of all my multi-channel files that I want to process and I've put them all in here. And again, since this is audio suite, I do recommend you work on copies of your audio files. Now I'm going to drag these files into Pro Tools. Okay, now we're in Pro Tools. And the next thing I want to make sure is what, that I have my timeline drop order set to left to right. Okay, so it's set to left to right. Now I'm going to drag these files onto the timeline, onto my 5.1 track, which is where I'm going to process them. Now, it doesn't matter where on the timeline you are. We're just using the timeline as a place to apply the audio suite uh, fold down. So now let me bring out Spanner. Before I do anything else, let me just show you that the session I'm working in is a, is a 96K 32-bit floating uh, bit depth session. So you want to make sure this is in 32-bit. This is how we prevent the files from clipping when we sum them together. As you can tell by looking at this file here, or these files, they're pretty loud. Um, so when I sum them together, normally in 24-bit, we'd get a lot of clipping and distortion. So, But that's not going to happen here. So let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to have in, in Spanner, we're going to have create individual files and entire selection. And I'm going to choose the down mix preset that says stereo, center minus 3, LF minus infinity. This is my preferred one, but you choose whichever one you like. So now I'm going to just select this over here. I'm going to hit render. Now you can see that it has folded these 5.1 files to stereo. Now they do look clipped, and I'll explain, I'll get into that in a second here, but let me show you how we get at the left and right files. We just make copies of these clips down to the mono tracks. And now we can get at the left and the right individually. Now I drag these up to the stereo track. Now, again, these look clipped. And if, and if we played them back, they would sound clipped. But you have to think of it like this. We're, there are 32-bit files underneath, but we're looking at, say, 24-bit waveforms, and also there are 24-bit converters coming out of Pro Tools. So the, the hardware and the, and the display can't actually handle what's underneath. So let me show you here. I'm going to bring up the Gain plugin from Pro Tools, and I'm just going to hit this Analyze button to analyze the files. And now you see, this is something we're not really used to seeing in Pro Tools, is levels over zero. But that's what 32-bit allows, is levels over zero. 
So what I've seen some people do in this case is apply limiters to these files and bring them back down to not being squat, uh, over zero. But in my, for my money, that sort of robs me of this, of about this much dynamic range. Six, whatever it's over zero, it robs me of that dynamic range. So instead of using a limiter, what I like to do is actually use the normalize plugin. We're used to using normalize to bring things up from low levels, but in the case of a 32-bit floating point session, we can actually use them to bring things that are over zero to below zero. So what I'm doing here, I have the, uh, I have the level set to minus three, and the settings are the same as they were before, create individual files and entire selection. And now I'm gonna hit render again. Now look what happens to these files. They look clipped here. Let me just make these bigger. So you can see how that looks squared off there. But when I, after I hit this process, that's gonna change. You can see how that came back. That is no longer squared off. And that's not because it fixed it. It's just because it brought it down to a lower level where the 24-bit waveform and Pro Tools can actually use the information correctly. So now what we have is files that are ready to export. These are now, if I bring up the gain plug in here again and do an, another analyze, you can see that the, the maximum level is minus 3 dB. And that's exactly what I had to normalize set to. So basically what we've done is taken files that are over zero and brought them below zero. And we, we've retained the, uh, the, the full dynamic range of the files. Now I'll just hit Command Shift K export clips as files. And this is actually where I choose my my 24 bit um, and 48K uh, settings. So I have Wave interleaved 24 bit 48K tweak head. And now I'll just choose to export them to my export folder and it'll do the conversion to 24 bit there. Now I'll switch back to the finder. Now you'll see I have in my exports folder. These are the 24-bit uh, files that are folded down to stereo. Now, the, the, the only drag about this is you're left with these sort of sloppy audio suite files that have norm in the name. And see, in this audio files folder here, this is all the sort of interim files. These are all 32-bit files because that's what my session was at. But I exported these files here as 24-bit, and these are the ones I'm going to actually archive. So what I'll do is I'll go back so my session's ready to go. Next time again, I'll go in here. I'll clear all these regions. I'll do Command Shift D to make sure they're all showing. Select unused. Clear. This will remove all the, the files from my timeline and session. I'll just save this session. Now it's ready to go again. Next time. And then I go, I clear out my audio files folder from the two fold down. I clear all this out. The only thing I'm left with now are my final exported 24-bit 48K files. These are all stereo. So anyway, I hope that's uh, helpful to you. It's, it's really actually fast to do. It's, it takes a long time to explain. It's a really, fa it's a really great way of folding your, your multi-channel files to stereo so you can use them later in your library. So I hope that's been helpful and hope you get some good use out of it. Thanks for watching.